Okay, so I got this question on addiction to alcohol uh, versus addiction to thinking, the differences, and also um, how is that related to 12-step programs and related to levels of consciousness? Um, so the well, a really good way to see it, uh, the addiction to externals, like uh, I can be addicted to alcohol, to drugs, I can be addicted to sex, I can be addicted to money, to validation, to all the external things, power, prestige. Um, and also that that that's sort of like uh, when the addictions manifest externally and the uh, and the difference between the internal addiction to thinking as well. So the levels of consciousness um, is a good way to see it. Um, the level of identification or attachment to form is correlated to how dark it gets, how uh, how far away I am from the infinite light and presence that's always here. So when there's uh, the core addiction, of course, is to thinking, but when the addiction to thinking gets stronger, it's like the darkness gets stronger as the ego gets more dense. And then uh, it usually manifests with behavioral uh, externalized addictions, which can be uh, at the end become very, very heavy into suicidal addictions uh, such as alcohol, drugs, food, uh, and the relationship addictions, dependency addictions. So uh, that's um, that then is the um, uh, that that's a very gross level uh, of extreme thought addiction. So it's like the thoughts are so identified with that they block out the inner light, they block out the light of God, they block off the holy instant. And uh, in that density of uh, thoughts, like a huge dark cloud, then these very dark addictions, which manifest externally, uh, uh, and a life-threatening to the physical body start manifesting, like drinking until you're dying, drugging until you're dying, uh, you know, eating until you're dying. So I, I definitely had uh, some of those addictions, uh, definitely the food addiction, um, and um, so and other addictions. So they do become very, very grim. Um, when you work a 12-step program, uh, you're starting to give up first the most externalized addictions, uh, um, you're tackling, for example, just putting down the alcohol or the drugs or the food or the sex or whatever it is, and uh, then going to the first layer of withdrawal from, uh, from addiction to the externalized addictions and go going, through the uh, going through the feelings uh, and uh, taking out the first layer of addictiveness um, from the ego, like stopping the alcohol, the drugs or the food. Uh, and that and that's already um, by doing that, then the thought addiction will become less, you know, now that it's, it'll be less ferocious because you're actually turning to the light by giving up some of the core um, ego illusions like alcohol is the source of happiness or um, drugs are the source of happiness or people are the source of happiness. So as you put those very heavy ones down. Um, you're, you're dismantling some of the core operating software, core belief systems, which make externals uh, the source, rather than letting go of externals being the source. And so the level of thought addiction, so often um, if an alcoholic in a 12-step program gives up uh, alcohol or a drug addict gives up drugs or a food addict gives up food or a sex addict gives up uh, sex addiction, then... Um, after a while, praying and meditating and, and praying to God to hand that addiction over, um, they'll start to feel a bit more peace and serenity and start to feel a bit more grace in their lives. And their, their extreme uh, thinking addiction will be less. So they'll just feel a little bit better. Uh, you can also work a 12-step program um, around, you could, you could have one, I think it'd be great even though it's very, uh, it'd be uh, a very high level program, which is the addiction to thinking. So now that you've given up the, the drugs, the alcohol, the sex, the food, the money, the power, the prestige, the, the validation seeking, now you've given up all those external things, you're just left with some thoughts still going through the head, which are blocking off the infinite presence. 
um, you know, that absolute trust in, in the holy instant. And so that would be, I call that the last addiction. Uh, so you've, uh, you've let go of all the external addictions. So the ego is not sort of obsessed with food, money, sex, or whatever it is, or people. Now it's just, um, there's still the comfort of just being in the thoughts, which is very subtle. But, uh, you know, I'll be in the future now, and then I'll be in the past now, and then I'll think about my body now, and then I'll think about some memories now. And, uh, you know, so still that there's a payoff. Oh, it, it's comforting, just like it's comforting to drink a glass of alcohol. It's comforting to have a big donut. Yeah, it's comforting to wallow in some thoughts, you know. Uh, let me just get some comfort out of just being in my thoughts just, just for the sake of it. It's quite familiar and comforting. So that's the last addiction. You could do a 12 step. So the 12 steps would be I'm powerless, just going back to my addiction to thinking. You know, I just, just, uh, I like the payoff of just being numbed out from the thoughts. Um, and a uh, higher power can restore me to sanity. I'm going to turn my life over. Am I self seeking my thoughts? Yes. You know, I'm seeking some kind of pseudo sense of comfort from just being in thoughts all the time. Um, is there a fear of letting the thoughts go and just being in the infinite presence and just allowing flow without thoughts, without an ego self-center at all? No, no identification with thoughts, they're irrelevant, totally meaningless. Uh, you know, uh, yes, there's a fear of letting that go. Oh my God, I won't be in thoughts. What am I gonna do? How am I gonna be in control? Um, uh, is uh, self-seeking fear dishonesty? Is there a dishonesty? Yes, there is a dishonesty. I don't wanna be in the oneness I don't want to be in the infinite presence. I, I want to carry on being in thoughts. So that's a dishonesty. So that's another defect from the 12 steps. So selfish, self-seeking. Is it selfish? Yes, you know, I'm blocking the light. I'm blocking the absolute light. So there is a level of ego selfishness. So, you know, you have a 12-step program uh, dedicated to the last addiction. Usually, I mean, of course, if you're drinking, I would say do the AA first. Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, if you're in too much food, do one of the food fellowships. Um, but um, yeah, and then the last one, if you want to enlightenment, let go of the final crutch, you know, the addiction to being in thoughts. So um, generally, each time you let go of an externalized addiction, the, the addiction to thoughts gets low. It's like, um, uh, so it will get better just to put down, you know, alcohol, drugs, or food. Uh, th there'll be less thoughts in the head, but as you, um, they'll st it still won't eradicate the addiction to thoughts because you have to sort of see the dishonesty, the payoff of just having the comfort of just being in the head all the time. You know, oh, let me just think of the what happened yesterday. Let me just think of what's going to happen tomorrow. So there's a there's um, a, um, a ego ego payoff in just being there all the time and not being in the oneness uh, not allowing the absolute flow to 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 be here okay so <clears throat>